breaking of every stronghold Thank you for the, breaking. the breaking of every soul tie thank you for the we thank you for the breaking we thank you for the breaking no power of the enemy no stronghold of the enemy whatever have the power to hold its grip we thank you for the breaking we thank you for your power we thank you for your power we thank you for your power your resurrecting power your resurrecting power your mighty strong power your delivering power your redemptive power your restoring power your healing power your healing power your delivering power your saving power your saving power your saving power if it had not been for the mercy of Jesus if it had not been for the grace of Jesus if it had not been for the love of Jesus If it had not been for the love of Jesus If it had not been for the love of Jesus We thank you for your power We thank you for your power We thank you for coming to see about us We thank you for hearing every single prayer We thank you for seeing on the inside We thank you for healing from the inside out We thank you for changing from the inside out We thank you for your power Somebody ought to bless the name of Jesus We command the kingdom of God to be made manifest in the bodies of your creation We trust you to manifest as Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals We release the kingdom of God into the emotions of the sons and daughters We loose the lordship of Jesus Christ into the nervous system of every believer At every place that this sound of intercession is lifted we calibrate that place for miracle signs and wonders. We take authority over the latitude and the longitude of every place that the sound of worship and prayer will be played. Father, blow the Well, greetings and God bless you. It's wonderful to be here with you tonight here at the river. Apostle Rod and Prophetess Selena Stevenson bid you greetings. The Rivers family, we bid you greetings. Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. You are tuned in to our Wednesday evening midweek broadcast, and we just say thank you. We're just so honored that you could worship with us tonight. We want to give you time to sow a seed tonight and really purpose in your heart to honor God. And you know what? I recognize that sometimes that might take a little work to purpose in your heart. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 that each one should give what he has decided or purposed in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. Why? Because God loves a cheerful giver or another way to say that is God loves a ready giver. So, see, sometimes we have to get our hearts in the right place and in the right posture. I know with all that is taking place and the challenges that we face sometimes, that's why I say sometimes that takes a little bit of work. But we purpose in our hearts to honor God and to give him the best of what we have. Because we recognize that he is good and that he is faithful and that he takes care of his children. Has God been good to you? I know that he has. And so I want you to purpose in your heart to give to the Lord out of a place of honor to give to the Lord tonight out of a cheerful heart, 
because that is the heart that God loves. You can text your gift. The number to text is 231-221-2160. That number again is 231-221-2160. Text the word give and include a dollar amount. You may also give by using Cash App at dollar sign R-O-L-W Muskegon. Please visit our website where you may also give. And our web address is rolwmuskegon.com. And then lastly, you may mail your check or money order made payable to R-O-L-W. And the mailing address is 1550 East Lakedon Avenue, Muskegon, Michigan, 49442. God bless you tonight. We, again, are just so glad that you decided to worship with us. Thank you for partnering with us tonight as we go before the Lord. We want to give way now as we receive our worship ministry. They're going to lead us in a time of worship as we prepare our hearts and as we ascend. Lift your hands and lift your heart to the Lord. Make yourself open, make your heart pliable to receive from the word immediately following our worship presentation. God bless you. You've been good, and your mercy, and 
mercy does endure forever does it not well my name is marla mccrary and i would like to welcome you tonight to this place this body this people called rivers of living water ministries international muskegon we are a people of love trust and truth and do you not know that truth has an address Truth has a voice. Truth has a name, and its name is the Lord Jesus Christ on tonight. And so we welcome you into this place called Rivers. We thank you for showing up tonight. We're so excited that you are here with us. And so we want to take the opportunity to let you know who we are. 
Our leaders are Apostle Rod Stevenson and his lovely wife, Prophetess Selena. And so we greet you with the kiss of the Lord, the fire of the Lord, the passion of the Lord, the presence of the Lord. Come on in the room tonight. Taste and see that the Lord is good. We're going to put a demand on his presence so that we can be his ministers of flame and burn tonight with passion like never before. And so I'm going to say a prayer over us, and then we're going to get right into tonight's message. And so, Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, the one called Holy, we come before you. We entreat your grace, your presence tonight. We're so excited that you are setting us aflame again. We're so excited for the fire and the embers and the radiance of your presence, God, tonight. And so no longer are we asleep people, no longer are we a lukewarm people, but we are people that burn with your zeal. The zeal for your house and the kingdom is consuming us tonight. Baptize us afresh in your fire, a living God, breathing God, moving God. Hallelujah, with your fire. And we receive it on tonight that we would go and impact nations and regions and territory as we you set us aflame and set us afire by your spirit in Jesus' name. And so tonight we're going to be talking about, it should be obvious, hallelujah, hallelujah, the God who answers by fire. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about the God who shows up. The God who responds, the God who reveals his face, health, and displays his glory by fire. And so one thing I really, really love about God is that many times, a, a lot of times, he uses symbolism so that we can have a, he creates a word picture. And then we can get a, a revelation of what he may be saying, what he may be releasing, so that we can learn his attributes and his character. And so we just... Um, give, he helps us to understand what he may be saying that we can identify. And so I'm going to give some examples of what that might look like. So he refers to himself as the bread of life. And so most of us know what it's like to have a loaf of bread sustain us and nurture us. And, and so we can be um, fed. Amen. So he's the bread of life. And so when he says that to us, we get an idea, a picture is painted. We understand that he is what feeds and sustains us to grow. Hallelujah. Also, he is called the great physician. He ain't just any physician. He said, I'm the great physician. We know what it's like to go to a doctor and they can tell you, well, maybe or sometimes or this is all we can do. But he is the one called great. And so we can identify and get a picture of this person and personality and the way he changes and how multifaceted he is. Hallelujah. And so we understand terminology like the healing balm of Gilead. We understand he's like an ointment for our emotions and those places, those wounds that we may have. So this is what I mean by God is a symbolic God. And so I want to explain how I got to tonight's message. And so for a two to three week period, our lovely anointed praise team, they kept singing about the fire of God. They talked about him being a consuming fire. And they talked about he is Jehovah that answers by fire. And he licks up strange, miraculous, supernatural fire with his water, rather, with fire. And so um, I just want to kind of be transparent because as they were releasing that, initially, um, Sister Kiara and I, we were ministering in dance. And so we had our symbolic flames of God's fire by way of our flags and banners. And so I was thinking, you know, I was, I'm a, I was a little distracted because I'm thinking, man, I wish we had some different um, expression some different banners you know we've had these for a while just as a creative you like to express yourself differently so I was distracted momentarily but then I was like you know what I gotta come up higher I need to start paying attention to not what we have in our hand but what is God releasing out of his hand what is the fire coming to do and so I began to pay attention, like, Lord, if the fire, if God is saying he sent his fire for what purpose? And a lot of times I think when the praise and worship team are ministering, sometimes we can be really familiar and we think that they're just singing a song. Oh, that's just them. You know, oh, this is a song for today. And we don't realize that it could very well be the voice of God because they seek him about, Lord, what do you want us to release? What do you want us to sing over your people? And so we got to get a revelation that, um, 
Sometimes God may be speaking through the person at the podium. He might be speaking in the praise and worship. He might be speaking in a song. And so I kind of picked that up. God, what are you doing with your fire? How do you intend to release your fire? What's this fire's assignment? And so um, just moving right along, I learned from Prophetess Ann when she taught the message, Receive the Upgrade. Um, she talked about how she got that message. She paid attention. She was alert. She was sensitive by way of coming even to the sanctuary. And I'm sure she sought the Lord. But she said she began to think about how when we came into the house of the Lord this new year, um, there began to be demonstrations of God doing a new thing and that we have been upgraded. And so things like this lovely backdrop behind me, those of us remember the former and what it used to like. It was beautiful, but this is to the 10th power. It's magnified. We see new equipment. I think most of us recognize that, but I didn't necessarily right away receive it as God saying, hey, I'm doing a th new thing around you. Pay attention. Receive the upgrade. And I thought, wow, that's really powerful because God sometimes, sometimes will speak to us by what's occurring around us. But we know first and foremost, he talks to us through his word. So we don't want to rely on just the things that are happening around us, but we do need to be sensitive and pay attention because it could very well be the voice of the Lord. So receive the upgrade, but then God says, I'm going to answer by fire. So we need to pay attention. God, what are you going to do in this place with your fire? Amen. And so um, we have to understand that God wants us to be sensitive and discerning and train our ears, our spiritual eyes, our spiritual ears to hear what he's saying. And I think um, a lot of times in this day and age, people use the phrase and the terminology of being woke. And it's like nothing could be further for the truth. A lot, the majority of people that that utter that phrase aren't more. Uh, they aren't alert no more than um, a person in a coma. They're not. They're they're not woke. And I'm not. I don't mean that to disrespect anybody. But I'm just saying, now more than ever, we have to understand and listen to the voice behind the voice. We have to pay attention to what God may be saying through symbolism. Through, uh, you can watch a movie and the Spirit of the Lord can speak to you. But like I said, we don't gauge that as our number one source. The Word of God is number one in His Holy Spirit is how we hear His voice. But God is wanting us to perfect and, just, and, and cause us to be a sharper, more accurate people. Amen? The God who answers by fire. And so most of us understand this reference comes from um, 1 Kings chapter 18. And we know that in that story there was a showdown. And there was a th then there was a throwdown. <laughs> and so if you read the story, what's occurring, there are 450 false, 450 false prophets. And so then you got the prophet of God, the pure, the authentic, the sold out, the blood bought, the blood washed. And so he proceeds to usher a challenge. He said, you know what? I had enough of this. Uh, all this foolishness, we know what we're going to do. We're going to have us a showdown. And what he began to do is to instruct those 450 prophets to erect an altar. And we know the Holy Spirit spoke to us many, many weeks to apostles teaching about altars and erecting and repairing and building and maintaining altars. So altars are important. So hopefully we paid attention to when that came across, when God was speaking to us about that. But even then, he says, you take your prophets you build an altar, you provide, you bring the bull for a sacrifice, and then you cry to your God. And he says, I'll do the same. And he says, I'm going to repair the altar of the Lord because it needs to be repaired. I'm going to provide a sacrifice, and I'm going to cry to my God. And who's never, who's ever God answers by fire, he is the one true, mighty, only, holy God. And so that's what happened. And so here are these 450 prophets, and they begin to cry out to their lifeless, mute, dumb, dead God. And they begin to do that from morning until noon, the scripture says. And so they're crying out, and nothing's happening. No voice is coming forth. No fire is coming forth. And so it's so funny because as you read the rest of the story, um, you can tell that God has a sense of humor because the prophet Elijah begins to mock them and tease them and say, you know what? You guys have been crying out from morning to noon and your God still ain't showed up. What's up with that? Where your, where your people at? Where your, where your strength at? Where your God at? And so what he says, he says, 
perhaps maybe you guys need to cry a little bit louder. Maybe he didn't hear you. Maybe he's asleep. <laughs> maybe he's straight sleeping. May, perhaps, peradventure, your God is on a long journey. Cry a little bit louder. <laughs> so that's what happens. They begin to leap and cry out all the more to no avail because there was no there was no place there is no God other than the righteous God that answers by fire. So he is the one true God, and they found that out. But as they begin to prance around, and it says that they begin to cut themselves. They begin to cut themselves until their own blood begin to gush out. That's just utter foolishness. And I thought about how it's like that today. So many people are so stuck on being in deception. They'll do anything to stay in that place of a lying wonder. They're rebellious. They won't heed the truth. They have itching ears and they are prancing around, leaping around, up, cutting themselves away from the cord and the place of truth. The God who answers by fire. And so as you read the rest of the story, we know that um, the prophet Elijah, he finished a challenge. He fixed the challenge. He finished it. And God answered by fire. And so one thing I want to share with us is that when it talks about false prophets, the scripture tells us in Matthew 7 and 15, as many other scriptures as well, to beware of these false prophets. There are false prophets in the earth today, people. And I know that um, there are physical people, there are physical ministries that are going around releasing. But the number one thing I want you to take away from tonight is that false prophets don't always have to be a person. Sometimes a false prophet can be a news story. Sometimes a false prophet can be a reporter or something coming out of the government or even somebody who's in a high ranking position who are telling us things and statistics that aren't truthful. They're factual, but they are false prophets. And so we be better be heed and not receive those false prophetic utterances and those lying wonders because false prophets are prophesying to us every day and we need to reject those voices. And so I want us to move on to understand that there are false prophets on the news, the news channels, um, on our job through the health organization of the world. There's false prophets out there. And so when they had the challenge, Elijah began to summon the people because he said, enough of this foolishness. You guys didn't call upon your God. So you, you guys come close and I'm going to show you how this thing is going to go down. And so it says he began to repair the altar. And so. One thing he did that was so significant, and he was instructed by the Lord about, about what to do. When he built the altar and got the sacrifice ready, he began to pour, I think, three times buckets of water upon the altar. So much so until it says the trenches filled up with water. And I thought that's really spectacular because what he wanted to show was that water and fire don't really, they don't go together. So if God is going to show up by fire with all those waters, you got to know that it really was God that answered by fire. And so they pour all their water. And we know from the rest of the story, God shows up. And, but Elijah begins to pray. And he says, he says, Lord, I've instruct, done what you instructed me to do. And he's saying, you are showing your people that you are the one who is turning their hearts around with this fire. And I thought, wow, that's so powerful. So God's fire can, can show up to cause a people with a cold, callous heart to be turned to a place of revival and repentance. And so as you read that chapter, you'll figure out that terminology as he's praying that prayer. He says, Lord, I'm praying. I am did what you told me to do. And I show these people it is you who has caused their hearts to turn out of the cold depths of hell, out of the cold depths of the world, rather. And so God answered by fire. And so I, was, I want us to understand that God wants to rekindle and wants us to be a, a blaze for him again. We ask you, God, to send your fire tonight in cold places where we've been lukewarm, where we have been cold. Lord, answer by fire. Send your fire. Show up by fire. Demonstrate by power, your, by fire, your power and your glory.
you answer us. You respond to a situation with your fire, with your flames, with your heat. Hallelujah. He's the God that answers all with his fire. Hallelujah. And we understand that's who he is. He's, so in the natural fire and water, like I said, they don't mix. So there was no way it was supposed to, that fire was supposed to ignite with all of that water. Because they're opposite of one to another. But with God, all things are possible. With the God that answers by fire, this is what took place. And another key nugget as you read that story, 1 Kings 18, it says that when the people saw God respond and, and answer by his fire, they saw it with their eyes. They saw the physical manifestation of the one true God by via his fire. And it says, as they saw that, 1 Kings 18 and 39, it says, as the fire failed, the people saw it and they fell on their faces to worship. They fell on their faces to worship. They fell on their faces to worship because they saw God's fire. They saw him answered by fire. Proclaiming that the Lord, he is God. And so this leads me to one of my favorite scriptures concerning the prophetic. I love, absolutely love this scripture. And it's um, it addresses 1 Corinthians 14, 25. And it says that when the accurate, authentic, truthful, prophetic utterance comes and reveals the secrets of man's heart, laying and exposing, manifesting nothing, things that nobody could know but God, then they will worship you of a truth because they know that the spirit of God is really among you. So when God answers by fire, it causes us to be engulfed in the flames of worship, in the fire of worship, where we recklessly abandon ourselves, get loose from ourselves, and we worship him because we see with our eyes the God who responds and answers by fire. Worship him. He's the spirit of truth. Worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Worship him because he is truth. We learned that last week. That was a powerful message. Jesus Christ is truth. Jesus Christ is salvation. Jesus Christ is coming back. But when he comes back with that fire, we don't want to be a part of that fire. We want to have revival fire while we're here in the earth realm yet. Amen. And so as we um, go forward, um, I want to talk about um, what happened to me as, as I was preparing for this message. And so I had a dream. And it was really short, um, and I shared it with my husband. And I know a, a little bit about interpreting dreams. I know some, they're not always literal. Um, they're, some, they're usually figurative or symbolic, going back to God uses symbols. And so in the dream, I saw myself just rising up and just straight killing people. <laughs> I was killing people on the left, and I was killing people on the right. And it was like I was watching myself in a Jackie Chan karate movie. Sister girl was slicing and dicing. I had the sword, and I mean it was effortless. I was just cutting down. It was like they would run to and I would cut, 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 slice. And I thought, when I woke up at first, I was like, well, Lord, what meaneth this? Because I know your word says thou shall not kill. I'm not killing natural people. Hallelujah. So when I begin to study this story, what happened after the false prophets could not get in contact with their God because he was on vacation. When the God that answered by fire showed himself and licked up all the water with his sacrifice. Then the prophet Elijah said, you know what? Now we're going to take these 450 false lying prophets and we're going to kill them. And we going to not even, don't even let one of them escape. And it made me think about Prophetess Ann's message where she says, God says, rise up and kill everything. And so I knew the Spirit of the Lord was saying, rise up and kill, O daughter in Zion, every false prophet, every false prophetic utterance, every false dream, every false vision, every false voice, every false God, rise up and slay. And I believe the Spirit of the Lord is saying the same thing to you as well. 
Don't let the false prophets prophesy and prophesy lie in your life. The God who answers by fire is the one true God, and the true prophets are going to rise up like never before with God's holy fire and righteous indignation. The God that answers by fire. I mean, I was killing everything false, everything dead, every lying wonder. I was slaying and taking names and moving forth and doing what God said to do. God answered by fire. And I was like, man, Lord, that's what you meant by that dream. It was just effortless, just cut, cut. And I like, it was like on, like in the movies. I'm sitting there, they run, somebody run up on me, and I just go, Ch -ch. it was, it was awesome to see that. So I knew what the Lord was saying. I believe that's what He wants to release when He shows up in His fire for you guys as well. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe everything that the news and the media is saying. Do your research. Hallelujah. And I want to put a plug in for um, this radio station my husband and I listen to. There's a broadcast, American Family Radio. And so you can go back and listen to the podcast. There is this holy, anointed, truth-bearing, righteous fire of God couple called the Addisons. And the TV and the broadcast is called Airing the Addisons. And if you want to hear present truth, righteous truth, the fire of God, you need to listen. It comes on every day on, on 91.7 at 3 o'clock, at 3.05. And so, like I said, if you can't make the um, listen to the broadcast, you can go back and listen to the podcast. And if you're talking about you want to hear some truth, if, some real truth, not just what the media is saying, not just what the White House is saying, they are giving us truth. And so listen to that program because, like I said, there's false prophets lying in the land. But false prophets are going to die by our hand as we use the sword of the Lord, the God who answers by fire. Hallelujah. God wants to release his fire like never before. We can't be a complacent people. We can't be a passionless people because the false prophets are getting right up in our face. They're coming right into our territory, right into our region, right into our homes as bold as a lion, but not a lion. We are the lion of, and the tribe of Judah. So we need to be speaking what thus saith the Lord with fire, the God that answers by fire. God says, I made the fire, I created the fire, and it's going to respond and do what I sent it to do. Hallelujah. And so I want to encourage us. I'm almost done. I want to give us some assignments of what fire can do in your life. And then you seek the Lord about what he wants to do in the fire that he's sending in your life. And some of us, some of you might find yourself in a fire, fiery trial, and that's okay, boo-boo, because God says, I got you. Because when you go through the fire, he says, you will not get burned. Your clothes will not get burned. You will not smell like smoke. So that's okay, too, because God said, I made the fire. The enemy might be turning up his flames, but it's okay. There's a fourth person in the fire with you. The God will answer you by fire. So don't worry if you are in a fiery trial. It's coming to test you and purify you. We're going to talk about some of those assignments of fire. And then I'm going to pray a prayer over us to release the fire of God. And so some assignments and purposes of fire. Fire comes to purge. That scripture reference is Isaiah 4 and 4. Fire comes to purify. Malachi 3 and 3. These are just a few references. Fire comes to protect us like a firewall of protection. I like that one because it's like even natural creatures know if you got a fire stick in your hand, they're not going to come near you. God says, I got a firewall and a perimeter of fire around us. And even Satan knows that there's a hedge of protection around us that he cannot infiltrate. So fire symbolizes the protection of God. Zechariah 2 and 5 and Revelation 21 and 6. Fire also can represent the presence of God. Hallelujah. God shows up when it's hot. He shows up in the flames. He showed up in Exodus 3 verses 2 through 4. Fire can represent the presence of God. Hallelujah. Cloud by day, fire by night. Fire can represent his actual presence. Fire can... Um, 
cause us to be passionate and zealous or fire, the revival fire are some terminology we equate with fire. Some references for that is Luke 24, 32. Did not our hearts burn with as a flame while Jesus talked to us? Hallelujah to God and answers by fire. We can be in passion and have a great zeal that will consume us by God's fire. John 2 and 17. Fire can resent, represent rather baptism. John said, there's one who's coming after me who is greater, who I'm not even worthy to carry his sandals. He can, he's going to baptize you with holiness, and you're going to be baptized with repentance, but he's going to re baptize you with fire as well. Fire represents baptism. And I know if you study it, for those who are um, theo the, um, theologians, we know that that fire is going to be in that place of judgment as well. But I do believe there's a separate baptism of God's fire. So I'm aware that that reference can mean that judgment. But I believe God baptizes us with fire. And I remember when I was um, studying for this message and I kept, I said, Lord, I want to, I kept asking for confirmations. And he kept giving, giving them to me even up to the day. Just fire here. I hear the word fire, fire, fire. So it's like, okay, Lord, I know that you are saying this is what I'm supposed to release. And so. I went back to my first message that I preached on a Sunday morning because we have been in this house so privileged and so graced to be able to have this platform and that apostle would share with us so that we can grow and help spread the gospel and to carry the load and the weight. And so I went back to my first message that I taught and I'm thinking the word was the title was our latter shall be greater than our former. And as I began to listen to that message, um, during the, towards the middle and towards, towards the end, I could see the fire of God upon me. Because, you know, I'm pretty much, I'm really kind of mellow, kind of meek. Um, but I saw the fire of God upon me. I was jumping and leaping, and I was looking like, who is that girl? I know there's a song Madonna used to sing, who's that girl? I was like, who is she and what is on her and what had happened to her? Because the fire of God was on me. So God does want to baptize us with fire. Sister DeQuisha, we were in Maryland and we watched you on the offering, of our offering exhortation as we were traveling back to Michigan on our way to the airport, and you did a lovely job, and she came up here with the fire of God upon her. God wants to answer by fire and baptize us once again with his fire. Hallelujah. So fire can represent baptism. Fire can represent boldness and righteous indignation. Amen. When those false prophets are lying and proper lying, we better be bold as a lion and say not so because truth is in the house. Truth has a voice and truth is responding and showing up by fire. Amen. Ha, hallelujah. Fire can represent the fire or the power of God. Judges 13, 26 or 1 King 18, 38 as we rehearsed that story. Fire can represent intercession. If you guys can see, we got a, a, a banner up here with the fires and flames of God because God says intercession. Leviticus 6, verses 12 and 13. The fire shall not go out. The priest shall have that fire continually sending up prayers of intercession. Fire represents intercession. Ask God, God, what do you want to do with your fire that you are sending to my home? What do you want to do? With, what is the fire's assignment? Amen. Fire also can represent judgment. Genesis 19, 24, or Revelations 20 and 10 are references. Um, fire can be represented um, by glory. Deuteronomy 5 and 24, Isaiah 66 and 15. This is how God can answer with his fire, his actual presence. Fire can represent God's light, revelation, illumination, Psalms 18 and 12. And this is another one. Fire is a revealer. First Corinthians 3 and 13, it says every man's work is going to be proved in the fire. Whether it was hay, wood, or whatsoever. <laughs> Our works, we don't, we don't work in a religious traditional way trying to make ourselves righteous. Because if you've been listening on Sunday, we know that it's only Christ's righteousness that we walk around in. 
but our works, those times when we did the right thing and stood in the gap and did what we were supposed to do, those works are going to be revealed through God's fire. God is going to answer by fire. God's can show up, or fire is also representative of the anger of God. Numbers 11 and 1. Also, I'm almost finished, and like I said, I'm going to pray and we're going to be out of here. Um, fire can represent the voice of God, and that can be found in Deuteronomy in 5. Hallelujah. So, God, what are you doing with the fire that you are sending our way? It's not just us up here waving flags and banner, but God, what impartation? Where am I? I'm a little bit lukewarm. Where could I stand a little bit more zeal, a little bit boldness, a little bit more zeal, passion, fire? Set us ablaze again, God. Ask him, Lord, what do you want to do with the fire that you're sending to my address? Not a natural fire, but a spiritual fire, a spiritual revival, a spiritual showdown between that which is false and that which is true. God wants to an- well, us to answer by fire. Hallelujah. And I've been praying more and more people of God um, for once the church is raptured out of here. I have been praying for those people that are going to be remain because it's going to get hot in here. And people are going to have to make the decision, take the mark or don't eat or don't purchase. And can you imagine having your child look at you hungry, but you know that I can't worship this false prophet called the beast. And so I'm going to have to trust God for my soul's salvation. I'm going to have to walk through this fiery trial, but he will be with you. But it's better to be ushered and transformed and raptured out of here. But my prayer has been for those that are going to be left behind. They're going to need the fire and boldness of God. Because this thing is going down. Scripture is manifesting like never in time agenda is is representing like never before and the fires and the flames are turning up y'all so we need to be praying for people you know because that's going to be a t- the world is getting just really really sucky if, forgive my language but i mean but can you imagine when you can't go to the store unless you have that mark that chip that that worship the image of the beast who dare set himself as a god but it's coming it's in god's word But that's not the end of the story. We know that God's judgment, God is going to throw Satan and the false beast and prophet into his lake of fire. He's going to answer by fire, y'all. So we want to make sure that we're raptured up, but we want to be engaged and enthroned in flames of fire now so that we can be a voice. Hey, judgment is coming. God has not equated or given us the sins or he's not charging our sins against us on this side. But when he comes back with his angels and his holy fire, then his judgment is going to reign. So we want to make sure that we're on fire for him now so we don't have to be on fire later. Amen. God wants us to answer by fire. People need to know they need to be awakened. And stop listening to the false prophets, just prophesying, prophet lying, prophet, prophet lying. God is truth. And thank God for the prophets in this house who are sold out, who are on fire, baptized in this fire, who are true, authentic prophets of the living God. God wants us to respond with his fire and righteous indignation. Hallelujah. And so that's all I have. I want to say a prayer over us as we close out. And it's something I just found as I was studying. And so, Holy Spirit, we want to release the fire of God in our lives. Your throne, O oh Lord, is like a fiery flame. His throne is surrounded with glory and fire and flames that display his glory and splendor. You are the God that answers by fire. You are the God that answers Father God in a heated place. You are the God that responds and shows up by fire. Hallelujah. You show us, oh God, a greater manifestation of who you are by your fire, God. And the fire goes before you, oh Lord, and burns up your enemies. Let the fire of God burn up 
every enemy on the north, south, east, and west. Let God's fire burn with a vengeance against his enemies. Lord, release your fire and burn up the works of darkness. Baptize us with your Holy Ghost and with fire. Let your fire be in our hands to heal the sick and cast out devils in Jesus' name. Let fire be in our eyes, our heart, our belly, and our mouth, and our feet. Let your fire be in our tongue to preach and prophesy your truth in Jesus' name. We receive tongues of fire in Jesus' name. Let your word be preached like fire. Make me a minister of fire, God. Make us a minister of fire. Deliver us with your fire. Purify us. Sanctify us with your fire, God. Hallelujah. That we may burn for you, O oh God. Let your fire protect and cover us. Hallelujah. To burn up idols, false idols and five false gods and false prophets in the land. Let the works of witchcraft and occultism be burned in your fire. Purify our life with your fire. Hold Let your fire be released in Zion. Let it be released in the church. Wake up. The fire of God wants to have course in your life. I lose fire in every church and every pulpit. There's other things that we need to do. We don't always go around in this place of aggression, but when it's necessary, we can carry the torch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, let spirits of lust and perversion be destroyed in your fire. Lord, release your spirit of burning to burn up the works of darkness off our family, off our bloodline, off our children, off our legacy. We send your fire even now, God, to burn up lies and untruth and false visions and dreams, oh God. Let your glory kindle, Father God, burning like a fire in Jesus' name. Cause your glorious voice to be heard. Let your voice be heard. Let your voice be heard. Let your voice be heard, God. Hallelujah. Let Babylon stumble. And let your fire burn it up, God, in your flame. Let all flesh see your fire being released. Create upon Zion a flaming fire by night. And let the fire of your presence be released in our life, God. Our children's life, our family's life. Let demons be cast into outer darkness and into your fire. We release your hot thunderbolts against the enemy. Cast forth your lightning and scatter, 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 scatter every enemy. Let your fire and your light and your holy ones burn, Father God, like never before. In Jesus' name, baptize us in fire and holy and righteous indignation. Set us aflame again. We stir up the fire in the embers. Sometimes your fire doesn't totally go out. Sometimes it just needs to be stirred a little bit. We stir ourselves up. We stir up ourselves and rouse ourselves and awaken ourselves, God. The time and the hour is near. Hallelujah. We are your people. Your blood bought, your blood washed. And we thank you for the fire. And you set us afire. You set us afire, God, once again. And so I loose this, fire, this prayer and this fire upon your people. As we close tonight, God, let us sleep and rest in the fire of your glory, in the fire of your presence. Protect us, Father God, when we come in and when we go out. And we'll bless you eternally. You are the king of kings and lord of lords. The king eternal, immortal. The invisible, the immortal, the almighty God who answers us by fire. Be blessed. Receive the fire of God. We love you. See you here next time, Sunday morning. The table is spread. God bless you.